Um, so hello everyone, uh, my name is Roberto. Um, I'm a senior software engineer in Red Hat. And today we're gonna talk about chocolate cakes. So um, I like very much all of them. Uh, and you know, many people have lots of allergies and tolerances. Um, so how do you make sure that you won't get sick uh, by eating one of these? Usually go to the ingredient list, right? Um, and the thing is, how do you know that you can trust that ingredient list? Well, um, usually there's lots of uh, food supply chain regulations in every country. There's guidelines on how to handle food. Uh, for example, if you touch something that, con that contains nuts, then you should not touch something else in a restaurant. Um, so usually we don't get sick from, from eating food in that state. Um, so this is actually very similar to what a a food supply chain is very similar to what a um, software supply chain looks like. Um, so um, this is like a typical um, software supply chain, um, very simply um, outlined. Um, everybody consumes artifacts um, made by these kinds of pipelines. Uh, basically, uh, even if you have one of these smart electric toothbrushes, uh, chances are your, your, the software in it is getting built by one of these pipelines. Um, so, yeah, if it gets um, some malicious code, then you're not brushing your teeth today, sorry. Um, yeah, and um, basically every time you use GitHub Actions or some GitLab CI or Jenkins Jobs, you're, you're probably using one of these. Um, it can get really, really complex. Um, so, trust me, it can get super complex. And each item that you put into the, the pipeline uh, makes it more more vulnerable. So, um, yeah, uh, basically each of the triangles uh, represents a, a kind of a threat to, to a software pipeline um, or software uh, supply chain. Um, no need to read all of them. Um, basically, no, no need to read anything in this in this presentation. <laughs> um, yeah, and imagine if, if, for example, if in the in the build, um, if we could. We could, in one of the builders, put some small script um, that would detect when the build is triggered and um, would input some malicious code into the code uh, um, that you're building. Uh, this is actually a real case. It happened to SolarWinds in 2020. Um, and it was a very famous case of um, supply chain, um, software supply chain attack. Um, so what SaltSec comes to solve is how do I make sure that um, this, the code that the developer wrote is what it's actually being run in your computer, uh, what the binary, what the binary actually contains and it was not, not tampered in some way. So um, this is, uh, Salsa is a set of incrementally adoptable uh, guidelines. Um, it's of course a guideline. It doesn't make your pipeline uh, or your software supply chain um, like unbreakable. Uh, but it's, it's, it should help uh, with, um, with hardening it. Um, so basically what it brings uh, is a common language. Um, words are kind of easy to trick and companies um, can usually do it very well. Uh, so um, it's, it's, it's safer to say, hey, I'm compliant with Salsa level one because the specification is super clear on what it means. Then um, whatever uh, kind of um, company um, talk you can, you can do. Um, it's also a, a way to evaluate um, how much you can trust that the code um, that the developer put together is what you're running. Um, I've actually seen in the Arc Linux uh, user repository, I've seen people trying to, to get um, Salsa certification for, for some of their, of their packages. Um, Actually, the most important thing is that it actually helps you improve uh, the security of your, of your software supply chain, um, making it less likely that your the supply chain, uh, well, um, the software, the artifacts generated by the supply chain um, contain malicious, malicious code. And um, there's many um, se security standards that you need to comply in many cases. Uh, one of them is uh, NIST secure software, software um, um, development framework. Um, there are executives order in the US uh, being released for that, that 
that make it compulsory to to, co to comply with this. Um, but they usually only tell you these standards, other standards, usually only tell you what the final state should look like and not how to get there. Um, so to start with talking about uh, salsa, um, it, most part of it, uh, it's about provenance. Uh, there are three key words here, verifiable, where, when, and how. Oh, it's actually four words. <laughs> um, yeah. So basically, um, provenance, um, in plain words, it can be whatever you, you want. Uh, but it could be a JSON file uh, that states how, how some artifact was built. Um, for example, if you have a, uh, a C program that you're building, you're compiling, uh, which command was, was used with GCC, which flags were used, um, which dependencies are we using, um, where did we download those dependencies from, uh, what the di digital signature of those dependencies are, uh, digests, um, all of this connects. Um, and ex you get like a document that tells you exactly how, how an artifact was built, whether it is a container or um, a binary or whatever it is. Uh, so yeah, it's very important, the concept of provenance. Uh, basically, it's a document that explains exactly um, how the, the artifact was built, and you can verify that this is actually true. So Salsa is divided into four tracks, um, sorry, into three tracks, uh, one for each kind of thread, uh, source track, build track, and dependency track. And each track has, has four levels of uh, certification. Um, the current state, uh, Salsa version 1.0, was just released in, I think, in April 18th this year. So um, it's early stage, and it only covers uh, build threads and the build track. And actually, for the build track, um, we only cover until level three. Um, level four is probably coming very soon. But yeah, uh, creating a specification of this kind is not very easy. Um, basically, if, if you read any RF, RF, RFC uh, spec, um, you probably saw that words are super precise. Uh, they, they're actually intended to mean what they are exactly intended to mean. Um, they are also, the, the Salsa Working Group is also prioritizing stability. Um, they don't want to put in any requirements for each level um, that is not achievable or that they do not agree um, that is secure. And basically, um, everyone involved in this, there's many uh, organizations involved and individuals, um, has to come to an agreement on what it means to be secure. Um, so yeah, it's, it's kind of tricky to, to reach all of that. Um, for example, um, well, for the build track, um, we basically have here the, the requirements for each level. Um, basically for level one, uh, you only need that the provenance document exists. It doesn't have to be verified, um, sing, signed, uh, it doesn't, you know, uh, just document uh, provenance exists. Uh, you're level one, you're also level one. <clears throat> uh, for level two, it also requires you that you have a hosted um, build platform. This is because um, usually when you have um, a build system that is very specific, uh, it's usually easier, the, the attack surface is reduced and it's easier to harden it if you have a system that only works for one specific thing. That's why it requires um, hosted uh, platforms. And it also requires you um, to prove that the provenance is authentic, uh, which means probably in most cases uh, digitally signed by the builder. Um, and for level three, it also requires you that the builder is all, all of the, build the builders are isolated between each other so that uh, credentials or, or private keys for, um, for, for the digital signatures cannot uh, mess around with, um, with each other. Um, the cool thing about Salsa is that you're not on your own. Um, they provide a lot of tooling. Um, for example, if you have um, a GitHub Actions job, um, then you're, it's, it's, in my opinion, personal opinion, uh, it's kind of easy to, if, if the workflow is not super complex, um, then it's, it's kind of easy to, to actually get um, um, 
SALSA certification for, for your artifacts. Uh, they're also doing a proof of concept in Jenkins, and they, of course, provide a SALSA verifier. Um, so, yeah, uh, you're not on your own, as in other standards that just tell you, hey, you have to be like this in the end, but they don't tell you how to get there. Uh, as for community, um, it's an open community. Uh, anyone can contribute. They're on GitHub. Um, you can feel free to create uh, commits, issues, merge requests. Um, they have monthly meetings. Um, you can basically attend. I think they are um, uh, basically a video call, so um, anyone can go. Um, they have a mailing list as well. Um, and yeah, it's it's probably not the golden standard yet, uh, but in my opinion, it has pretty good chance. And even if it doesn't become um, this super uh, uh, important standard, then um, that the actual measures that you implemented in your workflows uh, will help you uh, protect the, the supply chain. Um, and it also, being a very early in stage uh, of development, uh, it also allows you to new contributors um, to actually influence the specification. So if you think something is not wrong, is wrong in the, in the specification, uh, feel free to go to their meetings or, um, and tell it or to write, create a um, GitHub issue. And also for the tooling, um, you can create new, new implementations for maybe for the Jenkins that we just saw or um, I don't know. So uh, yeah, that's, that's everything and thank you very much. Um, If you have any questions, um, maybe we have some time. Okay. okay. Uh, any questions? Yeah, go ahead. I'm not sure I fully understand. Is it like self certification or that someone certifies it for you? Uh, it's self certification. Um, you, well, you check if you comply with the with the um, with the requirements. Uh, you have the salsa verifier to check um, if the provenance is generated correctly. And um, yeah, I guess that at some point we will have some some certificators that will um, certify your your pipelines um, for auditors. You know. Yeah, thank you. Any more questions? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, does it require for something like that for SBONs or less? For SBONs? You, yeah. Um, uh, they are both independent things. Um, you can uh, have salsa without having SBONs. But you can very easily generate SBOMs from Salsa provenance. Um, and it's usually SBOMs are generated um, in a non-verifiable non -verifiable way, right? Um, having the provenance uh, makes it actually verifiable. So um, yeah, both things go well uh, together. Thank you. Any more questions? Yes. Yes. So how how does salsa working group think of dealing with this? Is it deferred to be addressed later or? Well, basically, uh, the consumer of the software decides who who do they trust. Okay. So uh, basically, any as any other um, certification authority that you have on your browser, or you're deciding, or um, Firefox is deciding for you, <laughs> or Chrome, or whatever. Uh, who, do, who do you trust? Mm -hmm. um, so it's very similar structure. Yeah. Thank you. Any more questions? Okay, if you have any more questions, I'll be outside probably. <laughs> and if you want a cake. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>